Welcome to Overdub Purgatory. So I've not been recording anything for uh, a long time. You know, all summer I've just been playing gigs. My mom moved to town. Trevor moved to town. Just had a whole bunch of stuff going on. I'm finally back in the groove doing some uh, recording. So I just thought I'd uh, turn into a little bit of a live stream fun thing. So I'm using Reaper software. I'm, we're doing Tales from the Crypt. I'm trying to do the lead part using my um, my Strat with a telly neck with these Kinman noiseless pickups. I'm going into my Universal Audio Dream 65 Reverb amp. It's a uh, little pedal that has, uh, I'll just show you in case you're curious. I don't know if I got enough cable here. Yeah, I do. Ah. It's this little pedal that simulates a deluxe reverb reasonably well. It's, uh, you know, nothing beats the real thing, but um, turn down the gain, bring up the volume. Let's just see how it goes. All right, I'm going to get it rolling. This is just for entertainment purposes and, uh, you know, helps me focus if I'm live streaming and I don't screw up as much. Click track is nice, isn't it? But that's what it's like when you record. You just, you got to live by that click, you know. So timing is crucial. This guitar has been kind of neglected, so uh, the strings are kind of angry. And uh, so between takes, when you're recording, I usually tune. All right, I'm going to move this camera away from the speaker a little bit so you don't hear the click quite as well. The click is going to be annoying no matter what, but that's what we do. All right, let's take it from the top. Here we go. So I erased that one because I'm, you know, I kind of know the part, but not perfectly, so... 
there's a lot of holes in my plane. There's a lot of room to improve. So uh, this is a really good, uh, we call it uh, exercise or practice opportunity. I already blew it. <laughs> but I go, I just keep going. Because I need to run the whole song. That's a bad sign when you blow the first note. But this is practice. Let's see. What do I got to figure out when it goes? Uh, yeah, I went. It's got to be. So it's all in four frets. That little riff. And then. And the other thing, um, a key change that's kind of tricky but we'll get her i wonder what's going on anybody watching let's just check i got uh, zero people watching that's cool i don't care <laughs> all right let's do it because this is kind of unannounced and what do you call it uh, just abrupt here comes take 
close. I think I missed one note. And I know most normal people would punch in, but I like to get the full take all hooked together in one big uh, take. It's just kind of a self-limiting. Forces me to concentrate and learn the part. It's just good for practice. It's kind of a sadistic kind of a you know self i don't know what you call it when you're kind of uh what do you call it are uh overly strict with yourself just for the sake of practicing all right let's try it again man same song, Tales from the Crypt, lead guitar part. So when you do it over and over, you start kind of losing, you start forgetting where you're at as far as in the song. And uh, I kept it together on that one. Let's see how this goes. Start with a chord. Three, four, five, six, extra note in there I don't want but we'll run through the song good stuff in there so eventually the guitar starts staying in tune let's do it again you got to be crazy enough to stay with it
lost my concentration. ridiculous uh but that will not do so now i'm thinking my guitar is a little too crunchy so i'll clean it up a little tiny bit you want that clean sound Let's try to record the part again. Back from the beginning. I did get one thing right when it goes uh, the F sharp. F sharp. Try it again. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, oh, fuck. I got a major third in there. 
don't want no major thirds in there. No. Major third. No major thirds. No minor thirds. It's just power chord. Root, fifth, root. All right. That's still pretty crunchy. Gonna clean it up. Take the reverb down. Just a little tiny bit. Nice and less distorted and less reverb. save all disarm that track and we're going to add another track we're going to double it and then you know just in case uh they want to double something or uh i don't know maybe there's one note they want to swap out or something i'll have an option for double uh you know Uh, so that was reasonably good. I mean, it was, you could hear a little bit of like wavering in my pitch. It was just, you know, something not, I don't know, but I'm not a machine. I'm not a robot. I'm a human being. There's going to be variations in uh, the tone and so forth. So I don't know what you call it. Little variations that it's the human sound, you know little errors and little variations in pitch and sometimes your fingers not right on the string between the frets in the right place or you might not pick it hard enough or it might you know a note can be or so all those little different uh inflections and so forth so let's do another one here comes
good enough for now cool man i'm gonna save that and disarm that track we'll go back and i'll listen to the thing we'll see if i can get rid of that click where's the click Do something else. I'm going to run through this basement amp. The output's going to go into my uh, torpedo live. And what else? I think I'm going to go bone dry. So this will take a second. I haven't used this stuff in a long time. So we'll kind of take this thing away. Don't need that anymore. Put that away. And so the speaker out from that thing, what do we got here? Is this a speaker cable, instrument cable? Is 
You take speaker cable out, go into this rack mount thing, which simulates a uh, simulates a uh, cabinet. We'll see if that's plugged in. Yes. So, wait, we got a big old speaker cable thing. Where's that go? Here we go. This will be great. Wait a minute. Who knows where that goes? Wow. Oh, right there. All right. I haven't used this for a long time. So here comes the speaker cable. Stick it into the amp. Speaker out. So we'll get like a real tube amp sounds. We'll just see if that sounds better. And then this output goes through all this garbage. Oh, cables, worms, snakes everywhere. Just make sure. Oh, hate it. I hate working with wires and cables. Oh, miserable. But it's part of life. Once you get it hooked up, it's all right. But geez, Louise, there's a drum. This is highly entertaining. I'm sure. Okay. So here's the cable out of the uh, cabinet simulator. Plug that into the interface. And uh, ooh, come on, get out of there. We should be cooking here. Let's see what's going on. Plug into the amp. You know, I could use my pedal board, but I'm just going to get a real dry, straight amp sound. This is pretty cool. Ooh, get some input. There we go. So that's the sound of this 1962 or 61 Fender Bassman plugged into a uh, cabinet simulator. Ooh, man. We're kind of overloading the unit, so go crazy. Turn the amp up. Ooh. Um, we'll get another take with uh, this so we'll give them plenty to uh, you know if they don't like if the mixer man Ian doesn't like uh, my tone from that uh, what do you call it pedal which you know it's okay it's pretty cool we'll give him this chunky cool uh, what do you call it uh real amp kind of it's a real amp with just a cabinet simulation so oops i just armed the wrong thing where's my oh there's my new channel my new uh, track and we'll get the click going again let's do another take because we want to get it great. Uh, I, hit, I, didn't hit the, I didn't hit the chord right. Get rid of that. Do it again. Here we go.
All right, that's cool. I'm going to keep that. All right, save all. We'll label that uh, track. And I'm going to do a second one of those. And we'll give lots of options for our mixer technician. What do we got here? I mean, it only takes a couple minutes to get through the song. It's not like it's going to kill me to do another track while we're at it. Just won't make it epic. Good enough. Not good enough. Take it away. Do it again. <laughs> That's what it takes, man.
I, I got four lead guitar tracks. They're all correct. And now the guy that mixes it can just, uh, you know, take what he needs. So we'll label that. Uh, yeah, now I just got to figure out how to get this to Ian, who lives in Des Moines. He got it, you know, my Dropbox kind of quit working nicely, so... Uh, so this is all four tracks. Too much guitar. Oops. Bass part. So it's, there's four of my lead parts in there, which is, you know, kind of overkill, but. Uh, Ian is really good at mixing, so he'll he'll give him plenty to work with if he wants to. He finds something he likes, he can use that. Something he doesn't like, he can take it out. So this is just the demo. Uh, Luke recorded his own drum part at his house. And Ian recorded his guitar part at his house. These are just all parts Trevor made. So it's like a, kind of like a software drums. And he did the bass part, of course. And the guitar part. So he, our bass player in Surf Zombies can play guitar like crazy, man. He's super great on guitar. Plus he put in the cool Crypt Keeper. That's pretty amazing, man. That's one of my all-time favorite songs. One of my all-time favorite TV shows, Tales from the Crypt. It was on HBO for a while. And uh, I watch reruns of it sometimes. It's a little dated, but uh, I love it. It was really, I associate it with just happy times. I always love that song and the intro to Tales from the Crypt. So we got a few Halloween, you know, a few shows around Halloween this year. So we will... Uh, bust this out we always play we play the monsters theme we don't do a lot of covers but um covers go over really well we do all uh like a lot of original music but you know you throw in a few covers and people that are not sure what's going on because like i say it's instrumental and you know you're playing instrumental is hard for people to handle they're like they want words they want singing but there's no singing in our music. So there's no words. And people are like, oh, when are when, when, when y'all going to sing? You know, we know you can sing. You better sing because my wife wants to hear some singing. So, boy, you sing. I'm like, would you let go of my hand, please? <laughs> True story. So, uh, you know, we're playing instrumental music. Plus, it's original music. Usually, people want to like, you gotta do any ZZ Top, George Thorogood, or Johnny Cash. I'm like, uh, no. What do you mean, no? Like, uh, would you please step back, sir? We're trying to do a show here. <laughs> oh, can you give us, can you talk to us? So like, when we take a break, we'll explain the whole thing to you. But right now we're on stage, so back the heck up, Jack. Uh, <laughs> but yet we've kept this band going for 16 years. We're in the Iowa Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 
we uh, sell all our records and T-shirts and play all. We play down in Atlanta, Nashville, St. Louis, Chattanooga, Kansas, uh, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, uh, Chicago, Indiana. So not that we've gone that far. We could go farther, but, uh, you know, it's kind of nice to stay in your own bed. You know, we, we don't mind traveling. It's fun, but it's kind of stressful because we all got, you know, kind of day jobs and families and everything. And we could probably, you know, if we went out on the road and played full time, we just have to, you know, bring lots of shirts and records and CDs and stickers and stuff. We sell that. And, uh, you know, the merch really helps us keep going. And, uh, you know, we get a... a various fees from the venue and that pays for fuel and if we have to rent a van it all it all comes out pretty good and then we've got then i play in the drive-ins a, a duo that does 50s and 60s a rock and roll doo-wop so that's covers but surf zombies that it's going to be doing this song is mostly original all instrumental and so yeah man that's what I'm doing today. So now, like I say, I got to figure out how to, you know, we transfer Google Drive, some bullshit. I got to get this over, you know, I'm used to like burning a CD or something or mix it down to tape. You know, all this digital stuff is just kind of like wacky, but I'm dealing with it, man. Old guys can learn this stuff. So I'm using Reaper software. It's free. All you need is an interface. And either a microphone or something to plug into. And uh, you know, like I say, I use that amp simulator pedal or mic a real amp or just use this direct out of this basement, uh, which actually sounds really good once you get it mixed with the other stuff, right? Right now it sounds kind of sterile, but Ian, when he mixes it, he can reamp it. He can send it to another amp and mic that, and he can add spring reverb. He's got spring reverb galore. He's super duper analog guy, but he also is excellent at digital recording. He uses Reaper. And then Trevor is excellent at recording with the Reaper. He can come up with, he can, these guys can do anything with it. It's amazing. They're just really great. And I'm just, you know, I can barely track anything. And uh, these guys are just, you know, they're younger and they're really super. They grew up with computers. I grew up with like, uh, you know stone knives and bearskin rugs uh but uh yeah man i think i'm done with this for now so i'll just figure out how to get the tracks over to those guys they can mix it and so i'm real excited to be back into uh recording now maybe i can work on some original music here if i get some ideas i actually have a few ideas but all right, guys. Well, thanks for, uh, if you watched a little bit of this, I appreciate it. I know it's kind of tedious, uh, but when you record, you do it over and over until you get it right. That's what's nice. You know, if you only had one chance to get it right, you're like, you're done. Oh, but no, I need, I need multiple tries to get my guitar part, you know, to get comfortable recording. You know, recording is really uncomfortable to me, but once you get seated and situated and kind of understand the song, it's really fun. So that was excellent practice for me. And uh, that's what it takes, you know, to learn a song and get it right is multiple tries. And like with my cover band, The Drive-Ins, we've been playing the same songs all summer, like two or three nights a week. And now we got them down really good where you don't have to think too hard. You just execute, roll it out and get it done. It's a little boring, but not really because it's sounding good and people are liking it. So to get your skill to that level where it's actually, you know, effortless to play, it takes an incredible amount of repetition. That's kind of my, my mantra, mantra, mantra is repetition and do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again until you don't have to think. So it's, it's internalized in your, in the part of your brain that just stores it long term. You don't have to like, Wow, man, what's next? And that's kind of why I do so many takes is I'm pra also practicing and just getting it ready to play live. 
All right, I'm jabbering, and that's what I do. And uh, I actually do other things than talk on front of a camera, but I'm out. Thank you again for uh, stopping by, and uh, we'll see you later. Check. Let me know if you have any requests for videos, and I'll uh, see what I can do. All right. Let's see if I can find my thing and get out of here. All right. Goodbye. Thanks. Hopefully I can show this. Thing.